In this video, we get started with Microsoft Graph and PowerShell. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Seraltos. Coming up, we get started with Microsoft Graph and PowerShell. We'll start with an overview of Microsoft Graph and then move on to some examples. Before that, please like, subscribe, share with a friend, and become a member for early access to videos. Take a look at my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop and Hybrid Identities with Windows AD and Azure AD at Udemy.com. The links are below. Your support is appreciated. Also, I know many of you come to these videos to get a solution to a specific issue or to see some examples. You may be tempted to skip ahead to the examples. The Microsoft Graph is a significant change for PowerShell and having an understanding of what changed and why will go a long way to proficiency with Microsoft Graph and PowerShell. If you're new to Microsoft Graph and PowerShell, stick with the video to gain an understanding of what has changed. Back to it. So what is Microsoft Graph and why should you care? Microsoft Graph is an application programming interface or API used to access data about the Microsoft 365 platform. It includes Exchange Online, Azure AD, Enterprise Mobility, and other services. It offers a single endpoint to access data at graph.microsoft.com. Previously, there were multiple APIs to access 365 data. That's why we had a separate module for Azure AD and MS Online. Offering a single endpoint simplifies development. Developers don't have to write code to query multiple endpoints. Microsoft Graph is a RESTful API, meaning HTTP requests are used to access the data. We can use the get, put, post, and delete web methods to view and update data at the Microsoft Graph. That's a lot of information a developer may be interested in, but if you're like me, not a developer, why should you care? Microsoft has announced plans to depreciate the Azure AD Graph API and along with it support for the Azure AD PowerShell module. The Azure AD PowerShell module uses that API. It's the same for the MS Online PowerShell module. Both the Azure AD and MS Online PowerShell modules are planned to be retired. As of this recording, the planned depreciation of the MS Online and Azure AD module is December of 2022. Microsoft recommends moving any scripts or other PowerShell processes to the new Microsoft Graph PowerShell module. Microsoft is not actively adding features to the older Azure AD or MS Online modules. Development efforts are now focused on the Microsoft Graph PowerShell module. And that brings us here, getting started with Microsoft Graph and PowerShell. That sounds easy enough, just install the new module and update commands, right? Not really. There are some changes with the module we need to be aware of before getting started. The Azure AD and MS Online modules were custom curated to provide IT professionals with a simple way to access online data. In comparison, the Microsoft Graph PowerShell module is a thin wrapper around the REST API calls. Although the MS Graph commands look similar to the Azure AD and MS Online commands, they work differently. The MS Graph commands make an HTTP get, put, update, and delete API call. And those commands follow the same rules as the API call. Previously with PowerShell, we didn't have to think about what was going on inside the code. We just ran the commands and worked with the data it returned. Switching to the API Graph provides one API for all Azure AD and Microsoft 365 services. The Microsoft Graph PowerShell commands are auto-generated based on an API schema. That means we get faster updates and functionality compared to human authored modules. The downside is that the documentation is also automatically generated. The documentation may be accurate, but not always helpful. The commands are not always user friendly and offer little examples of usage. Inevitably, we'll need to reference the API documentation to navigate command options, such as filtering, for example. This may be helpful for developers but is not as intuitive as we're used to with other PowerShell modules. Coming up, we're going to prepare an environment by installing PowerShell 7 in the Microsoft Graph Software Development Kit, or SDK. Then we run through some examples by viewing, creating, and updating a group. Let's get started in PowerShell. We'll start in PowerShell. I had some working examples on PowerShell 5, but the documentation indicates we should use PowerShell 7. I'll use 7 for the examples to limit any unpredictable results. If you have PowerShell 7 already installed, you can skip ahead. We'll use Winget to install the package. There's also an MSI option available if you prefer that. Let's search for the versions available with Winget search Microsoft.PowerShell. 
I'll agree to the terms. We get the results for both PowerShell 7 and PowerShell 7 Preview. Let's install the stable release using the command winget install id microsoft.powershell source winget. We'll click yes when prompted. I can make this window a little bit bigger. Next, let's view the version by looking at the PS version table variable. Looks like I had a typo there. And it's showing we're still using PowerShell version 5.1. Let's restart VS Code to use PowerShell 7. To open up a new PowerShell window running PowerShell 7, let's go to PowerShell. Let's view the version table. Now we're on 7. We can switch between different versions of the PowerShell console with this dropdown. We can also create a new PowerShell session with this dropdown, as well as Cloud Shell, the command prompt, and Git. Good, now that we're running a PowerShell 7 terminal, let's install the graph SDK. This uses PowerShell Git to download the module. First, set the execution policy to remote signed for the current user. Next, we'll install the module for the current user. You can change the scope to all users if needed. Approve the download when prompted. Once finished, we can verify it's installed with the get installed module microsoft.graft command. There it is. And I'll make this bigger still. Now that we've downloaded the Microsoft Graph SDK, we have mg commands. Let's run get mg profile. That returns API version 1.0. This is the stable release of the API. We can change this to the beta version if we want to use preview features with the select mg profile command. Now if we get the current profile, it shows we're on beta. Let's change it back to version 1. Now it's set back to version 1. Now that we have the version set, let's log in. This is where things get a little different. We can set permissions our session will have when we connect. To do this, we first need to know the commands will run. Let's look at the permissions available with the get mg group command using the find mg graft command command. Select first one indicates we're selecting the first extended property in permissions. For this example, we want to create and update a group. So the first permission I want is the group read and write permission. Next, we'll run the same command only using get hyphen mg user. I only need to read user information for this example. I'll use the user.read.all permission for the example coming up. Now that we know what permissions we need, let's log in. By the way, you may be wondering why we need to set permissions. These permissions set the rights for the application PowerShell in this example. The theory of least permissions means we don't want to elevate our permissions beyond what we need. Therefore, we're only granting rights to accommodate the tasks we need to complete. Let's log in with the connect mg graft command, passing in our permissions or scopes. I'm already logged in. If this is the first time you're logging in, you'll get a prompt. Log in to start the session. Now that we're logged in, we can start by viewing our current groups. We can start with get hyphen mg group. Let's look at a Microsoft 365 group. This example, the group is called managers.
Here I'm filtering on the display name of managers. That returns a limited set of details. Let's pipe that into format list or FL to get all settings. Here's the complete list. If we go up, notice that the on-premises settings are empty. This group is sourced from Azure AD, not Windows AD. Also, let's go up to group type. The group type is unified. That indicates it's a Microsoft 365 group. Let's go down to security enabled. A Microsoft 365 group can be security enabled or not security enabled. This one is security enabled. Let's search for all Microsoft 365 groups. We know that all Microsoft 365 groups have the group type unified. Let's set the filter for that. That didn't work. I noticed there were squiggly brackets in the output we were just looking at. Let's add squiggly brackets. That didn't work either. Let's try using wildcards. And that didn't work. I'll stop here because we can't filter on group types. Let's look at the Microsoft documentation on the filter command. The link for this is below. This is a document that indicates what type of search works, what requires advanced property settings, and what's not supported. Let's go down to group properties. Display name is supported, but group type is not even listed. We can't filter on group type. I'd also like to point out one other thing. If we go to the command page for get MS group, we'll go down to filter. Notice that except wildcard characters is not supported. That means we can't use wildcards even if the filter is supported. So how do we find all of our Microsoft 365 groups? While we're still using PowerShell, we can pipe the output from one command into a where object command and filter for unified. Now we're returning all groups and then piping that into where object, and that will filter when the group type is like unified. Those are my three Microsoft 365 groups. Now we know how to filter groups, let's create a new group next. This example uses something called splatting. It's the creation of a hash table that includes the parameters and values that are passed into a command. Splatting makes it easier to read and update values in a command. A hash table starts by setting a parameter, then the at symbol, and an opening and closing squiggly bracket. The key value pairs are between the brackets. On the screen are the parameters for a new group. There are a lot of other options available. This is the minimum to create a security group in Azure AD. We'll select and run the parameter block to add it to memory. Next, we'll run the new hyphen MG group command and pass in the hash table as the body parameters. It shows it's created. Let's verify that with the get mg group command. This gets the group with the display name test mg group and outputs it as a list. That creates our group. Let's update it with members next. Let's start by assigning the group ID to a variable. This command runs the get mg group filtering on display name test mg group, but it only returns the ID property, and then it assigns that to the group ID variable. We can see our group ID by viewing the variable. Next, we need to get our user's ID. Let's use the get mg user command. Here we're using the get mg user, filtering on display name, and that user count is test1, user1. That's good, but we only need the user ID. So just like the group ID, let's create a variable called user ID. Then we'll pass in that same command, only returning just the ID. Now, if we view user ID, 
we've got our user ID for that user. Now that we have our user ID and the group ID, let's update the group. We'll use the new mg group member command for this. That command supplies the group ID and the user ID. Okay, no errors, that's good, but let's verify that user is in the group with the get mg group member command. With this command, we're also supplying the group ID. Okay, it shows that something's in it, and we can tell by the ID of a previous command that it is the correct user. But for future reference, I don't have everyone's directory ID memorized. Let's try it again, but outputting the data as a list. We'll just pipe it to an FL or format list. Here it shows the display name and the additional properties. Let's run that. Now what we're doing is we're still running the get mg group command, passing in the group ID. Next, we're only going to output or select specific information from the previous command's output. That includes the ID, which is the user ID. And in this case, we're passing in the additional parameters dot display name. Now we have the ID and the username for all the members of that group. And just because I'm a little bit OCD, I don't like the formatting of that, we're going to change the display name to just display name. We'll format the output with a name display name, and then use the expression to output the display name under additional properties. Okay, a little PowerShell formatting for you, but that looks better, doesn't it? We could add additional users if we wanted with the same method, but next we're going to remove the group. We'll need the group ID to remove the group. If we don't have it, we can use this command. That finds a group by display name and then returns the ID. Next relatively important step is verifying we have the correct group. You don't want to remove the wrong group. We'll use the get mg group command for that. Test mg group. Yep, that's what I want to delete. Let's remove the group with the remove mg group command. Here again, we're passing in the group ID. No errors. It must be gone. Let's verify that. We'll use the get mg group command again. Filtering on display name, test mg group, and nothing's returned. That means our group doesn't exist. That's how to prepare an environment to use Microsoft Graph. We also went over how to search, create, update, and remove a group with the MS Graph and PowerShell. That is how to prepare an environment for Microsoft Graph and PowerShell, as well as search, create, update, and remove a group. I hope this helps you better understand how to use Microsoft Graph and PowerShell. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.